I'll be doing example questions from a more difficult test in symbolization from Unit 3. We'll be doing three questions today, and they require a little bit more sort of thinking or perhaps a trick or two to solve nicely. Playing hard is necessary and sufficient for winning only if neither having fun nor having friends are not necessary for winning. This is an interesting question because there's no comma, and we have to really make sure that we know how to identify the main connective. So to identify the main connective, a handy way is just to actually read it out loud to yourself and see where you naturally pause. Now the way I read it, the natural pause was actually right before the only if. That's how I read it out loud. Playing hard is necessary and sufficient for winning, only if neither having fun nor having friends are not necessary for winning. And this is telling us that this is the main connective. I'm going to ignore that for now, and I'm just going to focus on this uh, part. Playing hard is necessary and sufficient for winning. That's okay. That's just a biconditional, so that's nice. And then this part has a, a trick here, or not a trick, a clause, neither nor. And then I also have a last one, which is this not necessary for. And so that one I want to think about in a bit. Okay, so I know that this is playing hard, which is P and sufficient for winning, which is R. Next, I know over here, having neither having fun nor having friends. So I know that's a neither nor. So having fun is Q, or having friends is S. Of course, you could use the alternate form of your neither nor if you like. Now, how do I figure out this not necessary for winning? And how do I figure out the only if? Let's do the only if first. I know then that the main connective is the conditional, which is associated with the only if. So what I really need to know is the direction. Is this green arrow blue, or is it blue arrow green? Well, you know the story by now. Without only, it just says if this, then playing hard is necessary and sufficient for winning, which means this would be if green, then the blue. But with with the only, it reverses the direction, so instead of it saying green-blue, it's blue-green. So I know that over here is P by conditional, whoops, that's really messy, by conditional R, and I'm going to put brackets around to preserve this as the main connective, and now I want to say neither having fun nor having friends are not necessary for winning. So winning is uh, R. And what does it mean to be are not necessary? Well, the necessary condition is this uh, neither having fun nor having friends. And so we know that that should be in the consequent at the very least. So my form is going to be for winning is R. And then I have this green part, which is not bracket Q or S. Now this says that uh, neither having fun nor having friends are necessary for winning. So how do I make this not? Well, you actually have three options to put the negation. You could put the negation here in front of the R, you could put it here in front of the consequent, or you could put it in front of the entire thing. But there's only one that actually makes sense. If you put it in front of the R, you it would say something like, neither having fun nor having friends are necessary for not winning, and that can't be true. And if you put it in front of here, which got rid of it, it would say, having fun or having friends are necessary for winning, and that's not right either. The trick to realize is that this negation is modifying the necessity, and necessity is a conditional relationship. So what is the negation modifying? It's modifying this conditional, which means it should actually be out here. So be careful when you have not necessary, not sufficient. You need to know that it's modifying the actual connective, which is the conditional, and to do that, you put it out front. So that's how you do this one. Nice little tip here about the not necessary or not sufficient. Neither Frosh, who aren't both mentally and physically ready for school, nor faculty enjoy Frosh week. However, Frosh leaders do. This is a longer sentence. It's got a huge abbreviation scheme. We just need to be careful that we don't accidentally use the wrong letter. Fundamentally, though, the main break here is signified by the semicolon, and the semicolon is followed by this however. You always know it's the semicolon because the semicolon sort of dominates over other commas, of which there are many in the sentence. So the comma however just means and, and so we know that the main connective here is the and. Now I also have another sort of funny indicator here, which is this comma who 
and another comma right there. And I need to recognize this as a non-restrictive clause. So I'm going to always symbolize the non-restrictive clause first. If you want to do it last, that's perfectly fine. And then I sort of read the leftover and symbolize that. So the non-restrictive clause here says, who aren't both mentally and physically ready for school. So this is a aren't both, which is just a not both clause. And who am I talking about here? The who is referring to the subject right before it, which are the frosh. So what I want to say is frosh aren't both mentally and physically ready for school. So let's find those uh, claims. Uh, there's one, s frosh are mentally ready. There's two, frosh are physically ready. And I need to say not both. So I'm going to say negation s and t. Of course you could say the other way, which is not s or not t, and that's fine. Because this is a non-restrictive clause, I put up a big and, and everything that I just symbolized is that blue clause there. Now I'm ready to read the rest of the sentence without the blue clause, and it just says neither frosh nor faculty enjoy frosh week. Okay, so that's just a neither nor. It's just a neither nor that's really broken up around this non-restrictive clause. So now I want to say frosh enjoy for uh, frosh week, faculty enjoy frosh week. So that's P, Q, but I want to put it in a neither nor form. So I'm going to say not P or Q. Of course, you could say not P and not Q as the alternate form, no problem. And that is this first clause here. Now the semicolon, however, is just and. In this case, if you want to put brackets up anywhere, like uh, around here, for example, that's fine. It turns out that if you actually just want to do it here, like this, that's also fine. When we have a string of ands, it doesn't really matter what the main connective is because they're equivalent. So I'll just leave it there for now. Now I want to say frosh leaders do. Well, do what? Neither frosh nor faculty enjoy frosh week. So now I just need to say frosh leaders do. So how do I say that? Uh, leaders enjoy frosh week. Uh, that's R, so I just say R. Now, wait a minute. What happened here? I have some leftover letters. Uh, I have faculty are mentally ready for school. I have faculty are physically ready. I have leaders are mentally ready and leaders. What are these? Well, I didn't use them. They're actually sort of red herrings. They're meant to sort of test whether or not you genuinely understand that the non-restrictive clause here only applies to the frosh and doesn't apply to the faculty or the leaders. So if you didn't understand a non-restrictive clause, you would have tried to use W, X, Y, and Z in your solution, but you're not supposed to. Last question. Although Pam plays either left wing, right wing, or goalie, only if she's the second of these will she score. This is sort of a, a weird question. It's actually testing just one silly thing but let's sort of walk through it. So here I have the comma only if, and I have also a reference term, which is the second of these, and uh, I also have uh, some other break uh, remarks here. I have this although, um, and so we need to sort of see how this all fits together. Now the only if we're reasonably comfortable with, the second of these is just from this list. Pam please plays either left wing, right wing, or goalie, uh, and that's got to be the second, which is the right wing. And notice that, uh, actually, I made a mistake here, so it's nice to correct mistakes. I have the although, and I should have been looking for the comma for the although, and that's this comma here. So this comma belongs to the although, like we've always done, which means the and is the main connective, and that's that green. Okay. Well, I'm actually going to do the harder part first just because uh, it, it's sort of worth spending a bit more time about. Only if she's the second of these will she score. So only if Pam plays right wing will she score. So how do we do this? Does this say right wing, by the way, is Q and score is Z. So as always, is this Q arrow Z or is this Z arrow Q? And the answer depends on the only. Without the only, it says if Q then Z, that's this one. Without the only, it's this. So, of course, when you put the only in, it's not this one, it's that, okay? So that's the answer. I wish I'd sort of move that over. It's in an awkward spot. Let's see if I can do that. Hey, look at that. Okay, 
So that means I know that this is Z arrow Q, and I'll put brackets around it. Now, how do I say Pan plays either left wing, right wing, or goalie? The trick here is, is, is sort of silly. You just need to remember that even though I have this word either, or is still inclusive, no matter what. It's always inclusive in logic. So you might think that she can't play left wing, right wing, and goalie at the same time, but why? I haven't told you what sport she's playing. Maybe she's playing this weird sport that she made up where you can be all these positions. We don't know. So the, the simple thing to do is just to not worry about these things. And just remember that or is inclusive and you're done. The way that this trips students up is that they would treat or either or as exclusive and try and write out this long complicated statement but you really don't want to do that you want to focus on the although is the main connective the only if and this is just a disjunction